Um, uh, I think. Oh, academics was reacting to Adam Twenty Two Lena. Hold on. These academics react to Adam Twenty Two and Lena the plug interview. Okay. All right. Let's watch this one. He did a podcast with his wife after his wife fucked. Yeah. I gotta say, like, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Let me take this. No Let jumper, this. coolest podcast <clears throat> in the world. For us, it was also seeing those couples. Okay. Let me give you my my theory before I even get into this. I've spoken to a lot of women who have done OnlyFans. From what I've heard, OnlyFans has dipped down about 40% since the pandemic. You know what I mean? When niggas was just straight jacking it, credit cards unlimited, stimmies coming in, people were paying a lot more money to see a lot more things. Apparently, OnlyFans revenue for the majority of of, um, OnlyFans creators have kind of dipped down 40%. Now, what I think Adam and Leonard are doing is a straight business decision. Now, again... My only question is, like, bro, you know, certain things are bigger than business. You know, and, for me. And real quick, so. Yo, people become very detached. When you are in the space that Adam is in, it's a different caliber of thinking. Because even when Ak spoke on it, I, I watched previously, Ak was like, yeah, Adam said I could talk about it. Why? It drives the sales. It's the same thing when Kim was Kim did her porn and got a lot of backlash. She got a lot of uh, 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 front lash, which is called cash. You know what I'm saying? So the backlash, the talk, blah, 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 the front lash, the cash. You know what I'm saying? She. So while people are like, oh, my God, we're disgusted. There are other people who's like, oh, my God, I want to watch this. Ooh, I'm pay to watch this. So a lot of times you would think about the backlash and the negativity, but you're not thinking about the motherfuckers that now this just came to their attention and like, wait, they did porn? What? His wife? Fuck the black man? Oh, I gotta watch that. You know what I'm saying? Cuck or not, he's thinking about the money and the empire they're building. And that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So they thinking about that bottom line, the money, he has a production company, um, and that's how they seeing things. So every time you are able to get attention on yourself, right, when you are, you know, exhibiting something, the people that say they don't like it should not only be the focus. Think about the people that like it. That's where the money come from. And the people that don't like it be the free marketers. They just promote the shit for you by just talking about it. <laughs> the people that hate shit be the ones that share it the most. Yo, have you seen this shit? Oh, my God, I can't believe this shit. Ew, ah, ew. It be them people that always think they're so much better, and then they, they they just think like, "Oh, you would never catch me like this," you know. It's like you have to um, create conflict with those people, like that that conflict where it's like you you do something where they say they would never do that. It makes them take what they would never do and show the whole world because then they can have that conversation and be able to say. Look at this. This is not me. I would never do this. This is disgusting. This should not be on the internet. Oh my God. Ew. Right. While that is happening and people are utilizing whatever that they don't like to uh, 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 put themselves on a pedestal, there's people that seeing this content of free that they're freely promoting and they like that and they're going to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? So I just gave you some game. You know, I always think about, you know, I think marriage should have some sanctity to it. Um, also, the person who's the mother of your child should be very important. Um, I don't think business and pleasure matches or meets too much. So, you know, for the most people, I, I just can't even understand co-signing your, your wife, like your wife of like literally three weeks to go suck on another dick it's just crazy to me but hey it's working but i do think these these two are making a business decision 
I'm now in a thought that I don't, you know, and I don't, I don't want to disrespect their marriage, but these might be two really rare individuals that could pick the business or pick the cash over everything to do with family, to do with love, to do with tradition, to do with mental health. And I don't know if that should be applauded or maybe I should just have some self-reflection to say, hey, act, you put your life into the content, but you wouldn't do that. You just pussy. So I don't want to even judge what they have going on. But, but what I w- will say is that I'm watching how they promote this stuff. And I see Adam leaning into this cuck shit. Like, I don't think he's completely okay with it, but he's tweeting like he's a cuck. And it's driving up the 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 attention, whatever, whatever. It's clear that he's acting whatever he needs to act to make sure this gets the best and the most views as possible. That's the business move. Mm-hmm. She's doing the same. She's also playing into it. Now, with that being said, and even like, you know, they did this interview. Um, I'm, this is just my thought. I think Adam looked at this like this. With all due respect, no jumper was dead after those dudes left the fans were turned off of no jumper they stopped watching i don't believe adam does this if he had the original cast that left this to me is a fucking you know when somebody about to die and and they'd be like yo one two (laughs) three clear yeah that's it. This is giving back life into No Jumper. And by the way, to, be, to keep it frank, I don't think No Jumper would have eventually died. Adam is a, he's a staple in the hip hop community at this point. He, um, I do think he's, he's talented in taking chances with new people and developing talent, no matter what you might think. I think they were going to survive. But rather than have this period, like, for example, say Joe Button podcast, because that's all he was doing. He was he was having the moment that the Joe Button podcast had when they kicked out the Stooges. Joe Button's podcast, like nobody was fucking with it. Well, people were, but like the numbers weren't numbering until like it took about a year and so. And I think with Adam, it's only been a couple months. And I think for him, he was just like, yo, shit. I don't have time to develop this new talent and shit like that. This is what I'm going to do. I get new content by being able to milk this whole thing that we could talk about with me and my wife, right? So she's fucking a guy. We're going to be talking about it on all our all our shows. We're going to be viral. I'm going to interview her. I'm going to interview the nigga who put his cock in her mouth. I'm going to interview the cameraman. I'm going to interview the producer. I'm going to interview the nigga who collected the semen after. You're going to interview everyone, right? <laughs> This is a great business move. Adam, in this whole thing, has given a shock and possibly life earlier than what I... I never thought No Jumper was going to die, by the way. He's given life to No Jumper. Her porn career... Remember, I told you, OnlyFans been down. I don't care what you say, and Adam can tell me if I'm wrong, but let's look at pandemic year over year. And let's look at projections from, I think maybe th- their shit was down a little bit. By the way, they're still millionaires, so I'm not saying this at them. We as creators always look at numbers and always want to go up, so it's a win-win. Adam's like, I could use this for content for No Jumper. Get that shit back popping. You get your OnlyFans to a level it's never been, and that's what it is. The more I see them doing this um, in terms of promoting it, it seems more business-wise than I see what some people are looking at it as. Adam's embracing the cuck shit. 
she's fucking embracing the fact that she got donkey fucked. Hmm. Yeah, th- this is a move for them business wise. Anyway, they did an interview, and um, I don't know if there's some specific parts I could go to. But I'm going to skip around. Let's that, see. and then Saturday morning, we're going to get breakfast, and you're like, hey, Jason is in town. I might shoot that scene tomorrow. And I'm like, huh, okay. Yeah, like, it was awkward. My sister was there. She's like, I don't want to be here for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, I don't know. Continue. I mean, Jason is the dude who fucked her. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> hey, yo, listen, man. This nigga calmly just, just threw a sub at Adam. Yeah, Jason is the dude that fucked up. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Fucking crazy, man. It's nuts. But um, yo, I think everything Ax said, I don't I don't have to repeat it because I agree. Um when you are able to separate yourself, right, from the metaverse and the content that's created there, because your your real life can be different from what's on camera, honestly. Like when you are living in your real life, you can separate the two. So, you know, Adam, this was a great business move, great business move, you know, um, and how Ag broke it down. She gets a bump and on OnlyFans, his production company gets a bump, you know, uh, the porn world looks at them like, oh, wow, they willing to try this? What else are they going to try? He gets to do a lot of interviews, uh, you know, interview the Jason guy. He's just interviewing his wife right now. He can have a whole cuck channel. He can start a show where cucks go do interviews. Adam and cucks. He can start a show called Adam and cucks. Adam and cucks is probably a brilliant idea that I just gave it to him for free. So what Adam does is he brings the guys who let their wives get fucked and interviews them. And then he interviews the wives and then he interviews the guys and the wives together. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a fucking brilliant fucking um, space. And no jumper. And Adam should definitely look into making that shit fucking happen, man. Like dead ass, man. Dead ass. Adam and Cucks. <laughs> Our executive produced that shit. A hundred percent. I think that's a fucking brilliant idea, man. Like, especially his black audience will love it. Because this is some shit that black, black men, it's like, what's the word? We're afraid of that. Like, if a, a nigga has another man fuck his wife and people find out, like, in the black community, it's like, it's worse than how we look at snitches. Yo, niggas rather kick it with a snitch than kick it with a nigga who lets other niggas fuck his wife. <laughs> hey, yo, I'm telling you. So that reason, for that reason alone, they're going to watch this show because it's like, Nigga's gonna watch like oh, I can't, and they will talk about it. So Adam, yo, listen, Adam and Cux, trust me, you have a black audience that's gonna watch that. And then the woman, you can inter- you see, you can inter- interview the guy, and the, the 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 woman, she's gonna be sought after because people are gonna be like, your husband let you fuck other men, so that means you are accessible to us. So that would be the fantasy. So now, if you go on her DMs, mad niggas gonna flaunt her DMs. Yo, yo, tell your husband, I wanna get in, I wanna get in. That could be her brain. You know what I'm saying? Adam can definitely create a formula, replicate that, and do that shit. And Beto can executive produce that shit. <laughs> Let's see what else. Who said it's not real? He put his cock in her, bro. She tweeted out a video. The cock is deep in her belly. And then we, I just walked away. I was like, I think I'm going to shoot with Jason tomorrow. And you were like, okay. And I walked away. I went to wash the dishes or something. And then I come back and you're just like, no facial, no kissing. And like, <laughs> okay. That was like the extent of the conversation. Right. Um, and then I left the next day to do it. And you barely said bye to me because you were playing poker. <laughs> I said bye. I mean, I'm playing eight tables at the same yeah. time. I mean, it's kind of hard. But um, And then... I'm so glad that I was doing something that is like requiring of the most cognitive load possible. So it made it kind of hard to think about it while it was happening. And then by the time you got back home, I'm like basically like finishing up poker then. So I didn't really have a ton of room to think about it while it was occurring, which was nice. It was the best place for you to be for sure. Because that is kind of my happy place that I don't get to do very often. Yeah. Yeah. 